चलो फिर से आज वो नजारा याद कर ले शहीदों के दिल में थी वो ज्वाला याद कर ले जिसमें बहकर आजादी पहुंची थी किनारे पे देश भक्तों के खून की वो धारा याद कर ले माँ तुझे सलाम तू मस्तक पर विराजे यही है मेरी शान हर जीवन तेरे आचल भी के लिए यही है मेरा अरमान Indians have always shown resilience under pressure. Trial by fire has been the stronger point for Indian freedom fighters. They have left behind a legacy of courage, fortitude and their unconquerable spirit. The sacrifices of Indian freedom fighters are the very reason India today stands proud and is walking into the era of new India. He is saluting the sacrifices of Indian freedom fighters who laid down their lives for the sake of every Indian's freedom. At the outset, my humble pranam to our guest for the event, Honorable Advocate Anupam Rana, our respected principal sir, Mr. Sanjay Yadav, at a middle school, Ms. Sunita Rajiv, teachers and my dear friends. Today we all have gathered here to celebrate our Republic Day on this 26th January 2022. We assure you all that today's assembly will be full of exuberance and excitement and shall create some beautiful memories for all of us. This is fascinating. Do you know praying or meditating also gives the mental calm and brings us in state of satisfaction so let's all pray to the almighty to get the internal happiness and delight let us join our hands for the prayer teri hai zameen tera aasman tu bada meherban to bakhsh सभी का है तो सभी तेरे खुदा मेरे तू बख्शीश कर तेरी है जमीन तेरा आसमां तू बड़ा मेहरबान तू बख्शीश कर सभी का है तो सभी तेरे खुदा मेरे तू बख्शीश कर तेरी मर्जी से आए मालिक हम इस दुनिया में आए हैं तेरी रहमत से हम सब ने ये जिसमो जान पाए हैं तू अपनी नजर हम पर रखना किस हाल में है ये खबर रखना तू अपनी नजर हम पर रखना किस हाल में है ये खबर रखना तेरी है जमी तेरा समा तू बड़ा मेहरबान तू बख्शीश कर सभी का है तू सभी तेरे खुदा मेरे तू बख्शीश कर तू चाहे तो हमें रखे तू चाहे तो हमें मारे तेरे आगे झुका के सर खड़े हैं आज हम सारे ओ सबसे बड़ी ताकत वाले तू चाहे तो हर आफत टाले ओ सबसे बड़ी ताकत वाले तू चाहे तो हर आफत टाले तेरी है जमीन तेरा सुमा तू बड़ा मेहरबान तू बख्शीश कर सभी का है तू सभी तेरे खुदा मेरे तू बख्शीश कर खुदा मेरे तू बख्शीश कर
गायत्री मंत्र का अर्थ होता है कि उस प्राण स्वरूप दुख नाशक सुख स्वरूप श्रेष्ठ तेजस्वी पाप नाशक देव स्वरूप परमात्मा को हम अपने अंतरात्मा में धारण करें वह परमात्मा हमारी बुद्धि को सन्मार्ग में प्रेरित करे नाउ लेट एस मूव टूवर्ड्स द फूड फॉर माइंड लेट एस कॉल मृदुल फॉर द थॉट ऑफ द डे भारत के जनतंत्र पर सारे जग में मेहमान दशकों से खेल रही भारत के अद्भुत शान सब धर्मों को देकर मान रच गया इतिहास इसलिए हर देशवासियों को इसमें है विश्वास गणतंत्र दिवस की हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं जय हिंद थैंक यू मृदुल फॉर दिस इंस्पिरेशनल थॉट आई एम पसल व्हाई डू वी नीड अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन यू विल योर सेल्फ डिस्कवर as the tricolors of this republic day unfolds ek zimmedar nagrik hone ke nate hum jis desh mein rehte hain us desh ki poorn jankari hona zaruri hota hai khaas taur par desh ke samvidhan se judi baaton ki jankari hona bahut mahatvapurn hai kyunki tabhi aap apne adhikaron ka sahi tarah se upyog kar payenge bharat ka samvidhan vishv ka sarvoch samvidhan mana jata hai ऐसा इसलिए क्योंकि भारतीय संविधान में लोगों के अधिकारों का ध्यान तो रखा ही गया है साथ ही कोई अपने अधिकारों का दुरुपयोग न कर सके इसका भी ध्यान रखा गया है यानी कि आपको जो भी अधिकार मिलेगा उसकी एक सीमा भी साथ ही तय की गई है ताकि कोई भी इसका दुरुपयोग न कर सके भारतीय संविधान से जुड़ी कुछ उच्च जानकारी आपको बताते हैं the people of india solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expressions belief faith and worship equality of status of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 to hereby adopt and enact and give to our self this constitution thank you Pingali Venkaya was a freedom fighter and the designer of the Indian National Tricolor who went on to become synonymous with the spirit of free and independent India. The national flag that we see today was based upon his design. His life and contribution to the freedom struggle have barely been documented. Initially Venkaya came up with saffron and green colors. but it later evolved with a spinning wheel at the center and a third color white the flag was officially adopted by the indian thank you it is the longest constitution in the world the english version has 117369 words with 117369 words the constitution of india contains 444 articles in 22 parts 12 schedules and 150 amendments it would take you 15 hours to go through the entire constitution The Indian Constitution was published in Dehradun by Prem Bihari Narendra Zada and Indian calligrapher who hand wrote the entire constitution it was written in a flowering italic style 
the original hamlet constitutions was decorated by artists from shantiniketan a neighborhood that was expanded by ramendranath tagore 1946 the constituent assembly met for the first time The constituted assembly was the first parliament of India with Dr Sachin Dananda Sinha being the first president of the assembly on December 9 1946 It took almost 3 years to write it down to be precise it took 2 years 11 months and 18 days to come up with the final draft of the Indian constitution No wonder it is the longest constitution in the world 2000 amendments were made to the first draft before being finalized as many as 2000 amendment were made the constitution as of january 2020 the indian constitution has been amended 104 times since it was first enacted in 1950 i am amazed these interesting facts swept me off my feet Our freedom fighters displayed incredible bravery in their struggle against British rule. They took part in a resistance movement against a repressive government and shattered the power of strong Britishers. The lesson from the life of freedom fighters was that no one is above the country. भारत से अंग्रेजों को बाहर करने के संघर्ष में देश के हर कोने से लोगों ने भाग लिया उनमें से कई ने भारत को अंग्रेजों के अत्याचारी शासन से मुक्त करने के लिए अपना जीवन बलिदान कर दिया आइए हम अपने उन स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों के बारे में जानें जिन्होंने हमारे देश को अंग्रेजों के शासन से मुक्त कर दिया defeat and killed in the field of battle we shall surely earn eternal glory and salvation ek desh ki mahanta balidan aur prem us desh ke aadarsho par nihit karta hai don't say that doing better than you beat your own record because success is found between you and yourself freedom is not given we all should have fought the desire to die to die so that india could live the desire to face a martyr stead so that the freedom slave could be paved with the blood of the martyr tum mujhe khoon do main tumhe azadi dunga jai hind jai bharat freedom of mind is the real freedom a person whose mind is not free though he may not be in chains is a slave not a free man thank you Let us invite the budding artist Yuvraj, who will help us dive deep into the life of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose through his live drawing, and also a fellow artist of 60 who have showcased their creative talent through their paintings. Subhash Chandra Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose, also known as Subhash, was born on 23 January 1897. He was an Indian nationalist whose defined patriotism made him a hero in India. Subhash Chandra Bose. was born wealthy and privileged in a large bengali family in orissa during the high noon of the british raj his teenage and young adult years were interspersed with brilliant academic success he was also respected from the university of kolkata his father urged to take the indian civil service examination he succeeded with distinction in the battle first exam but demurred at taking the more routine the clinton final exam Returning to India in 1921 to join the nationalist movement led by Mahatma Gandhi and the Indian National Congress, Bose at first worked with Priya Das in Bengal. He labored under Das's mentorship. He then followed Jawaharlal Nehru to leadership in a group within the Congress. Bose rose precociously to become Congress president in 1938. The senior leadership in the Congress supported Gandhi, and Bose resigned as president. and was eventually ousted from the party in July 1940 Bose was arrested by the Bengal government over a small protest in mid January 1941 he escaped from india in dramatic clog and dagger fashion heading northwestwards into afghanistan april 
one post arrived in Nazi Germany where the leadership offered unexpected if equivocal sympathy for India's independence. In November 1941, German funds were used to open a free India center in Berlin and to set up a free India radio on which both broadcast nightly. With Japan in support, both revamped the Indian National Army INA, the Indian National Congress, the main instrument of Indian nationalism, and praised both patriotism but distanced itself from the tactics and the ideology, especially his collaboration with fascism. Thank you and Jai Hind. I was intrigued by new things that we learned about our great leader today. It was indeed an eye opener for me. Today we are blessed to have our honorable speaker of the day, Advocate Anupam Rana. Sir is a lawyer with 18 years of practice at the bar and 10 years exclusive practice in the Supreme Court of India. He completed LLB from CLC University of Delhi in 2003. Enrolled with Bar Council of Delhi as an advocate since 2003. He has also qualified advocates on record examination held by the Supreme Court of India in June 2013. So currently pass, pra- practices until drafting arguing pleadings including special leave and writ petitions in constitutional civil criminal and service fields. He is father of one of her classmate Harika. request you to address our audience and add something to their moral value uh, my hand folded namaskar to shri sanjay yadav sir principal sir and shrimati sunita rajiv ma'am the head ma'am namaskar sir hearty welcome to our school and we are so eager to listen to you yes sir um, my hand folded namaskar first of all i was delighted to hear this young constituent assembly and almost they deliberated on all aspects of uh, the constitution as to how we framed it and as to the present day document which is so sacrosanct to us as indians uh, and a warm uh, welcome to the faculty of alcon also and a warm hello to my young students who are in attendance today from alcon international i am extremely delighted at a personal level and honored for uh, having been invited in this august morning assembly which is a very special gathering i know that so the topic uh, for today's uh, short discussion is the indian constitution with a special emphasis on republic day celebrations which are just which is just now a day away from all of us i'll uh, i'll briefly introduce this young audience uh, to the indian constitution from a historical perspective uh, so india has had a glorious past and yet it is impossible to relate to the ancient systems of governance uh, for the present in order to understand this relationship of the people to their laws to our constitution which is the mother source of all laws in india we had a long history of foreign invasions uh, thus the easier and safer alternative uh, would be a starting point uh, which would start with the arrival of british in india with whom our present day legal and constitutional system of governance is directly associated so early britishers uh, if we trace them they came in around 1600 ad and they ultimately left India in the year 1947 without going into the intermediaries of all that an act which became a very important piece of legislation in facilitating the transfer of power to people of India was the Indian Independence Act of 1947 which uh, sort of became an enabling act for us to draft our own constitution because by then we were under the uh, queen and we were under uh, the britishers at this point uh, i must also tell this young audience that in the year 1935 that is almost a decade before we ultimately got our independence the government of india act was promulgated which is the government of india act 1935 what it essentially did it made division of power between the center and the then provinces because there were no states at that point of time there were only provinces and there was the center this act essentially substituted a federal for what was in substance a unitary system of governance in british india so now uh, when we come back to the present day constitution the independence act of 47 which we just discussed received uh, the royal royal assent from uh, british queen uh, that was on july the 18th 1947 
the british rule in india came to an official end on 15th of august 1947 which you all of course know that is the date of coming into force of the indian independence act 1947 now one date which is just a day away from all of us is this uh, is the day january the 26th each year each year it marks a very important event in our history uh, this date uh, commemorates the enactment of the constitution of india which came into effect of course on january 26 1950 that is almost 3 years after we got our independence on uh, august the 15th it is on this day each year that the famous republic day parade is held at rajpath here in delhi which displays and showcases both our military progress prowess and the cultural heritage of the country i am sure many of you must have participated through our very best alcon international school in the republic day celebrations and watching the young citizens from various school dancing down the aisle alongside various cultural tableaux is a visual delight for all of us now uh, coming back to the historical relevance of this uh, particular date that is january the 26th is a special day on which the constitution of india came into effect now to put it more simply for the young audience the constitution was passed by the constituent assembly which was a special assembly on november the 26 1949 but we adopted this date is very crucial 26 november 1949 is when we passed our constitution by the constituent assembly which was a 308 member but we adopted 2690 democratic governance system at its core thus completing the country's transition into an independent republic now a logical question that must occur to all of us is why 26 january was chosen why not some other date why 26 now the answer to this lies in the year 1930 which is when the declaration of indian independence which we all know as purna swaraj was proclaimed by the independence seekers and freedom fighters through the indian national congress of course so this date in 1930 when we declared that nothing short of purna swaraj will suffice that is why this date was chosen for adoption of the indian constitution although we got our independence on 15th of august 1947 yet we did not have an independent constitution on that day we still were relying upon the then government of india act 1935 which we just discussed above although of course with some modifications to the independence act of 1935 which we had done it was on 28th of august 1947 again a date which is very crucial uh, it is on this day that is 28th august 1947 that the drafting committee was appointed to draft a permanent constitution with sir shri dr b r ambedkar as its chairman while 15th august is celebrated as independence day thus marking our freedom from british rule the republic day celebrates coming into force of our own constitution which is our holy document a draft constitution was submitted to the constituent assembly on 4th of november 1947 that is the same year uh, which we got independence this assembly after uh, this draft constitution was submitted by a committee headed by sir shri dr b r ambedkar you will be uh, you will be amazed that how robust our uh, democratic setup was right since inception the moment britishers left this country that from 4th of november 1947 the constituent assembly met in open sessions to public for 166 days they were spread over 2 years 11 months and 18 days which of course was just told by a young member of the school and it was finally adopted after many deliberations and some modifications 308 original members